Welcome to the webinar on version 10. This is our introductory webinar to version 10 of XTM Cloud. And my name is, is Seamus Dermody. I'm the sales director with XTM. And I'm going to be giving a brief overview of the new features in version 10 and on the product version 10 itself. And we'll follow that up by a brief presentation by Bob Willens, XTM CEO, on version 10, the product itself. Version 10 is XTM's most significant release of the XTM cloud product ever, apart from launch, of course. 14 Java developers, five front-end developers, nine QA engineers, three PMs, one designer, and the ancillary staff, including Bob Willens, CEO, and Anders Ayadron, the CTO, have been working on XCM version 10, um, mainly since August, but also some features have been in January 2016, at least in concept. The XTM version 10 is a combination of the XTM roadmap and client partnership development. It includes a complete user interface overhaul of the XTM product, giving a completely new look and feel to XTM. So who benefits from XTM cloud version 10? Project managers with new collaboration features, linguists, Software localization teams with more in-context capability. Customer security and confidentiality. Banking companies, insurance companies, medical device. Translation quality and productivity. The big theme of version 10 is collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. XTM version 10 highlights. We won't be able to cover every release or all of the, the new features in version 10 and the additions in version 10. But I'm going to focus on some of the key highlights. A radical new user interface redesign. Project management smart filters. The ability for a project manager to be able to view only the projects that they want to view, that they need to view. So overdue projects. Projects with steps that are overdue. Projects that haven't been started. Projects in a particular language. Projects belonging to a particular project or a particular group of projects, should I say. XTM also has a new instant men messenger, the next level in collaboration, team collaboration for translation management systems. XTM has a mobile app for project manager with version 10. The TAUS DQF framework has been plugged into with version 10. The LQA, the linguistic quality assurance metrics, the auditing metrics, um, translators, translation companies, and translation projects can now be tied to linguists and language service providers. There are string linked image reference views for localization, software localization, and we also have the ability to anonymize source text for that important documentation. There is full integration with the leading um, terminology tool in the market today, TermWeb from Interverbum. We have new integrations with site, Git, and in-context web, web, web app rendering solution, Oracle Right Now enhanced, um, and we also have enhanced API calls. And we've also developed enhanced API calls. Please also visit us at Localization World in Montreal on the 26th and 28th of October, which is next week, um, at Boot 8, where we will have full demos of version 10, prizes, and giveaways. All right, with that, over to Bob. Thank you, Seamus. Uh, just switch me to become the presenter. There we are. So right from the, the start, you can see that XTM has got a, a new logon screen. We've got a, a, a new photograph in the background there. That's of Montreal, which we thought was very appropriate as... Uh, We'll be launching this at Lockworld next week. So just logging on. Uh, when you go into the program, you can see you can see the projects. And immediately we've got you can see the new modern look and feel of XTM. We've moved the top menu right to the top of the screen. And um, it's kind of taken a theme of uh, 
of a monochrome theme to to make it nice and simple, have lots of contrast. The top right hand corner, you can have a photograph of yourself. Um, we then have, uh, we've moved the configuration to the cog icon next to it. And then uh, next to that, we have the icon that that shows when you have a new instant message. Below the main menu, we have um, the secondary menus here. And then we have the, um, for projects, we have a listing of the simple search, advanced search and actions. Now, you can see here we have the ability to, to customize the actual table of projects you're looking at. We have the filters, um, which I'll come on to in a moment. And we also have columns. In the columns um, menu, you can see you can select which columns you want to display in the table. And if I click on tooltips, you can select which bits of metadata you want to show in the in the tooltip. You can then save this for yourself, or if you're an admin, you can save it as uh, for everybody on the system. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit now about the advanced search page. And in the advanced search page, you can see we've completely rewritten this, and you can see that we've reorganized the fields to make better use of the space. Um, you can collapse this advanced search so you can view the results more easily. So if I put demo in here, you see immediately you've got some more options that appear. So we, we, we try and make the best use of the space possible. So if I go search, you can immediately see all the projects that contain the word demo. Then if I want to save that as a project filter, that's very simple. I just click on this button here, up pops a window, uh, demo filter, and click save. And now, when I, if, I, um, if I get rid of that and go search, I can get see all my, all my projects now. I have uh, 12 projects. And in filters, I can hit, use my demo filter and immediately I'm back down to five. So re very handy, very quick. And as Seamus mentioned, you can put all sorts of information in here. You can say which projects um, are current, which are archived. You've got um, which projects are, are waiting for payment. You can have uh, when they were created, you can put a range of dates in there. And we've got, we've got some pre-configured um, current week, for example. You've got the due dates. You've got which customers are you are you, are you preparing this for? Uh, project manager, who's managing the project? You've got um, who created it, the status, whether or not it started yet, which linguists are employed, source languages. So you you've got complete control over finding your projects. Coming back here, um, I can get rid of that, and then I'll see all my projects. So let's have a look now at the messenger. Um, Seamus, I don't know if you're logged into um, your account, are you, at the moment? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to try and have a conversation with Seamus. So we're now going to demonstrate how you would have a start a chat. On the left-hand side here, you have the context menu, the project context menu, and you click on it and you say Open Messenger, and you have the option of chatting to all the linguists or just uh, the linguists in a target language. So uh, let's do it to all linguists. I'm going to say, because I know, hello, Seamus. Yes. Oh, thank you, Seamus. That's great. One thing to note about this is that the um, identity of the linguist can be masked by using a nickname. In this case, Seamus is down as a reviewer. Um, so we no, no risk that... Uh, uh, the identities of your translation resources were going to be uh, released to people you don't want them to. So there's there's our chat feature. And again, um, if you're a user, you can come and, and a translator. If you're a translator, you can go to tasks and you can see here a translator can open messenger. You can chat directly with the project manager. You can chat directly for specific, for specific linguists or for all linguists. Okay, so the next thing I'd like to show you is the LQA feature. 
obviously we had LQA before, but um, in, in that instance, you couldn't save it against any um, translator's record. Now we have got a LQA. You can see that, that we've done some translation here, and now I want to come along and mark it. This, this one, you can see we already had got one, just done a little bit of uh, LQA marking on it. But let's move down, add something here, and let's say that's a problem with fluency. And if I come down, then we can see that. So some of, some of these, um, let's just put one more in, and that's a minor. Okay. So now we've marked we've marked a particular piece of translation, and then if as a project manager we open the project, and then we um, move it through to the end, so imagine that it's been finished, we can see first of all that um, the LQA report is visible, and probably didn't do very well on this one. Ninety-seven point four percent. So that was the score on that. So then let's um, go and see if that has been saved against the user record. So we come to users, and so I was a translator on that particular task. And if we come down to rating, you can see. Here we have the, L, this is the report and the score, I got 2.4 on that. And that's how many words were checked. And here's my overall rating. So that over time, you can, you can build up a complete history of the um, performance of translation and, and um, uh, monitor the quality that each translator is, is providing. I want to show you a little bit how that um, how you set that up settings area you can have where we have the QA section we have the LQA and here you've got the various settings you can, the severity of each item you can see we have a very long list and this list has now been unified with the TAUS list and so you decide which items are important to you you select them and you set the, the, the weighting here, so, and also the um, factors you want to apply for the severity. Having set up LQA, you can then come to projects and define which step in the workflow you want to run your LQA. Now, if I want to check the work of this translator in, in this step translate, but, but carry out the LQA in the next step, I just set it here and you can see here do you want to carry out an LQA no but show existing errors yes save results in the user record yes don't save results so you've got the full option uh, to, to display here so if I want to record these results I click there and then update so that means when the project gets to that step in the workflow the corrector can view the work of the translator and mark it at the same time. So that's LQA. Now what I want to talk about is our integration with uh, Taos DQF. So we're very excited to be partnering with, with Taos on this and um, um, we feel that, that our integration will provide a superb functionality for project managers to monitor the performance of the translation resources. To set up uh, the integration is very simple. All you do is you come to the settings area and you go to projects and you enter the details here. You have you enable Taos and then you can uh, set your logon credentials. This obviously involves you having a, an account with Taos and those details are carried forward through to the customer details. So each customer you can define that if you come here settings we have the task details here, and they're also visible on the Create Projects page. So having set that, what happens is that uh, the information is automatically stored about the performance of the translator, how long they're spending on each particular segment in the workflow, um, and 
what translations they're actually performing. This information is sent then across to the TAUS via the API, and the results are displayed in graphical form on the TAUS DQF dashboard. In future, we'll be adding the ability to send over the LQA information directly from XTM as well. So you'll have not only the performance, but also the quality. Okay, um, I want to show you a couple of uh, features we've got now with um, integrations. And we have the, um, the ability to, first of all, show images. Now, XTM have, can firstly do ID-based matching. This is where you have um, each string that you're translating has a specific ID. Uh, this can be an ID in an Excel file, or it can be an ID from an XML or HTML file. And if you um, can then tie an image to that ID, you can then upload those images to XTM and display them in the editor. What we've done now is we've created an API to allow you to upload those images um, en masse. So if I open here, you'll be able to see um, exactly what I'm talking about. Here you can see the editor, and you can see that we've got an, an additional column beside each segment. And if you mouse over it, you can see. This is a, a wonderful example. It's obviously an example from the games world, but you can imagine other examples within software um, or product development where, where a graphic can be extremely helpful to the translator to get context of what they're translating. And if this can all be automated, then the whole process uh, becomes very easy. So that's one new feature we've added. The other thing that we have is the ability to integrate with a program called Riggy. And Riggy allows you to visualize applications and identify where the string is located in that application. So let's come out of here and have a look at the Riggy example. Here we have Riggy, and if I open that editor, So this is of a, an example where um, we're, we're localizing um, an application. And the way this works, it, it, it goes through the application, it creates an HTML file uh, or XML file, and is able to do screenshots of the file and identifies where the text originates on that screenshot. So when I come to have a look at something, uh, for example, let's take a piece of text here um, with comments on. Let's try the number eight. Here we are. Um, so archive reports when viewed from the browser. So let's have a look at that. We click on that. So we log on to the – immediately it shows us the page where that text has come from. And you can see it's highlighted in yellow here, archive reports when viewed from the browser. So the translator knows the context of the text that they're translating. They can immediately see it. Um, you know, you can you can take another one here. Let's, let's try another nice long bit of text. Here we are. Immediately goes straight to the, where the text is and you can you can see it instantly. So these are, the way Riggy works, it creates the screenshots and then creates an XLIF. And so basically all you have to do is upload the XLIF and the XLIF has um, all the uh, URLs of the screenshots uh, attached as metadata. So then from, with that, we can um, immediately link each segment to a particular screenshot. Finally, what I'd like to show you is our mobile app, and this is a very exciting bit of uh, development. This is a, an app that runs in iOS and Android and is specifically designed for project managers to view their projects on the go. So if I come, and I'm going to show it to you today using a, an emulator, um, an emulator called Andy, nothing to do with our CTO, but um, it's an emulator for, for Android. Now, if I click on here, I've got that installed. Um, first of all, I need to use a PIN to log on. This, first of all, we set this server where we're going to, um, where our XTM instance is uh, installed. Then we enter our login details.
Okay, so let's come here. First of all, and the, the most impressive bit, is our list of projects. Um, you can view a whole lot of projects, and you can see that on the left-hand side here, the smart filters that we'd created on the desktop version of XTM are automatically synchronized with the mobile version. And so these are the ones that we created earlier. And if I view, for example, um, not started projects or partially finished projects, so overdue steps, overdue projects, got a whole lot of different options to select. If I do demo filter, that was the filter we created earlier. You can remember there were five projects, and here they all are now. Or if I want to um, just go back and see all of my projects, here I've got 10 projects. Now, if I've, if I've selected something here that is, say, overdue projects, maybe that I, what I want to do is um, go and uh, find out what's going wrong with them. Maybe one of the translators isn't able to do the work. So if I come here, I can see the information about the project. And if I click on the Workflow tab, then I can see who's been assigned to the tasks. Um, part of the problem perhaps here is that um, for some reason there's nobody assigned to the correct one step or the review step. So I can allocate various people to do that task. I'll do it myself and here as well. Good. So now that's now all underway, and I can rest assured that I don't have a have a problem with that. So as you can see, very simple, very easy to use. Um, I'm actually showing this as a um, landscape mode, but I can equally well view it in the um, as if it was on a mobile phone. And you can see the again, very simple to use. Very simple. We have a um, the menu at the top here where we have the list of projects. We can also see the users. Here are various users in my system. And um, if I want to contact them, I can just click here and I can call them. Or I can send them an email. So very, very useful. Um, <clears throat> you can view the LSPs. You can view tasks. What tasks? So if I were a translator, I can see what tasks I've got here. You can't actually do the translation here, but you can see what, what work you've got accounted. And the other thing you have is a, um, rather than having to go through the laborious task of entering your logon details each time, you can just have a pin. And that pin um, will allow you to connect to the server. So as I say, this um, mobile app is available for iOS and Android, and you can download it for free from um, either the Apple Store or the Google Play. So I think that I've covered just about everything now. So unless there are any questions, we'll, we'll wind up there. Thank you very much, everybody.